It is good to be with you again, Dr. Allen, uh, the head of infectious disease at SickKids. Thank you again for your work and leadership and ongoing advice to parents across our province. We are obviously monitoring the increasing COVID numbers within our community. And I think that has given a sense of concern for many observers. And I thought it'd be important as we enter the flu season to speak with you about what parents can do to keep themselves and their families healthy and safe through this pandemic. Thank you for your question, Mr. Minister. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you. I would suggest uh, three things uh, for families. Uh, first is a recognition of the importance of remembering the things that we uh, told them that they should do prior to COVID to reduce the risk of getting the flu. So for example, staying home if you're ill, covering your cough, your sneeze, proper hand hygiene measures, those still apply. And indeed, they overlap to some extent with the second uh, category of recommendations that are more specific for COVID, such as physical and social distancing, uh, using a mask as recommended, uh, proper hand hygiene measures. These all um, are strategies that can reduce the risk of uh, the flu and indeed other respiratory viruses. Uh, I should also mention uh, third, and that is the importance of the flu vaccine. It is important um, for us to receive the flu vaccine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think for many parents, the curiosity is when and where they should be getting their flu vaccine because it's been well telegraphed that this year especially it's critical we get our families and our kids vaccinated. But help us out. Where can you get it? When's the right time to do it? Well, uh, it, is, it is available now. I strongly recommend it. Uh, it's it's it, it very important. Um, uh, in fact, even when there is no COVID, it is important. And then, of course, now that we have COVID, it is even more important. Um, uh, to put it in perspective, uh, one of the things that I often say is that we really don't know how our immune systems will would cope if we get both flu and COVID at the same time or close to each other. So it's really important um, uh, to get the uh, flu vaccine to prevent us from um, getting flu, the flu, at least to reduce the risk. Now the vaccine uh, is available at uh, doctor's offices. They can get it from pharmacies as well as local public health clinics. With respect to the public health clinics, uh, it's important to contact your local uh, public health unit so you have an idea as to when the clinics um, will be open. Typically, the times and locations are posted on their websites. Now, Dr. Allen, you know, parents are seeing the rising numbers of COVID cases. And as I said off the top, I think we're all a bit concerned about that, obviously. What would your message be to parents who, you know, want their kids to stay safe, want them to learn, want them to be as normal as possible, uh, but also recognizing that they're uh, anxious about the numbers and um, the stress that this is imposing on not just the child, but even on their parents? Yeah, it's a really important question, Mr. Minister. What I would say is that it is important first to reassure children that COVID-19 is for the most part a mild illness among children. There are some who can get uh, severely ill, but the vast majority of children have a mild illness. Uh, try as families to make the conversation as age appropriate as possible. That's really important. And there are books, um, various resources that are available uh, for families to help to uh, speak to kids about COVID. Uh, talk to them about the virus and how it is spread and how it can be prevented and, and how we're all in this together, the various measures that we can uh, put in place to reduce the risk that we transmit COVID if we have it or we get uh, COVID um, from others. So these are all ex extremely important measures. Um, uh, explain to them about uh, the use of masks, hand hygiene, physical distancing, among other measures. And I think I, I must say, Dr. Allen, I'm just so impressed with how young people have stepped up through this pandemic to learn, to adapt, uh, and to embrace uh, the public health advice. So I'm really, really pleased to see that. Uh, part of prevention is screening. Now, we have updated our, uh, our school screening tool. 
that it was announced uh, just a short while ago as revised and approved by the Chief Medical Officer of Health. Let parents know what are those specific symptoms you want them to monitor and watch and what advice do you have for them in this respect and how to use that, that tool? Thank you very much. Well, to begin with, I think uh, the tool is great and I think it's really important that um, families um, become acquainted with the tool and, and I try to find it by just Googling and it's, it's, it's easy to find. So, so that's the first thing that I, was, that I would say. The tool has two basic categories of symptoms. The first category uh, are the ones that are much more likely to be associated with COVID than the second category. And that first category, like fevers and or chills, um, cough, shortness of breath, loss of taste or smell, are ones that are more likely to be associated with COVID and families should look out for those. The second category uh, are more nonspecific, uh, like a sore throat, difficulty swallowing, runny nose, um, stuffy nose, headaches, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, those are symptoms that are generally more nonspecific and may be associated with other conditions. And so uh, doctor, as doctors, we often say it's for those, uh, let us see what happens um, if uh, after 24 hours, they're still continuing or getting worse, then we can make a decision around that. Uh, or if perhaps they're occurring not as one um, set of symptoms, but a combination of two or more symptoms, then um, we should be more concerned. So looking out for those two categories of symptoms, uh, I would, that's really important for families to um, uh, become acquainted with what's in the tool. And we talk often, Dr. Allen, about preventing the spread of COVID-19, but there has been a significant mental health impact to COVID-19 on a lot of families, seniors and young people and their social isolation. Uh, I know in government, we are stepping up those investments. We just made a big announcement with the Premier uh, recently uh, to build on that. But what, how can you arm parents who are on the front lines with their kids to really support positive mental health, to know the signs and where to turn to? Yeah, the, the issue of mental health is, is really a concern uh, right across the age spectrum. Uh, and that's so, so important. Um, it is normal for us all to feel anxious at this time. It's, it's um, also important for us as a community uh, to recognize that we need to support kids' mental health by facilitating uh, safe social interactions wherever feasible, wherever possible. Um, role modeling um, with the help of individuals such as parents and teachers who can role model healthy ways of coping with anxiety and uncertainty and ensuring that uh, kids know that there will be fun in the future, uh, something to look forward to, and that everyone is working together to try to figure out the best ways to ensure that some activities continue um, or resume if they haven't um, resumed as yet. So this is really important. Uh, we also need to remember to check in with kids, uh, making sure they're doing okay, they're feeling fine, uh, watching for behavioral changes. Uh, and of course, um, looking for signals that might suggest that there should be uh, a concern on the part of um, the families um, to access mental health um, services. Um, there are a number of various resources that are available. Being in touch with your healthcare provider is one. Uh, I also um, want to mention the uh, About Kids Health um, website at Sick Kids is a useful resource for that. Um, www.aboutkidshealth.ca I find um, particularly helpful. You know, I know this has been a long experience, uh, very difficult on, on all of us, but I am very proud of our parents and our students and our frontline staff who are really rising to the challenge, doing everything possible uh, to keep themselves safe, to keep learning, to stay positive. And I just want to thank everyone who is uh, catching this video and to thank Dr. Allen uh, for really inspiring us all to do our part because we all are on the, we all can make that difference. We all can literally help reduce this risk and flatten this curve get our, our province, our economy, our society back on track. So let's remain hopeful 
and let's remain focused as a society and a country to do our part. Thank you, Dr. Allen, for teaching us and reminding us how we can be a part of the solution. And I want to thank everyone who is watching this for continuing to really um, represent the best of our country. Have a great day. Thank you.